Okay, so we've got some new updates on 3i Atlas. Is it maybe heading towards Mars? And actually, have you seen that press conference from NASA um, about finding evidence of life on Mars? I don't know if you noticed, but there was something really odd about it. But we'll get to that after the Free Eye Atlas updates. Welcome to our new channel. Uh, we're just starting out here and we're just trying to create a place where we can all exchange ideas in the comments. So let us know what you think is going on with 3i Atlas and <clears throat> all this stuff with, with NASA. Because it seems like 3i Atlas has all the ingredients to kickstart a planet like Mars. Okay, so where is 3i Atlas right now? So if you're looking up at the constellation of, of Libra, it's just next to that. It's inside Jupiter's orbit. So it's currently passing through our main asteroid belt. Um, I'm just still wondering whether if it hits something there, could it change its path and maybe redirect it to, to Mars? There's an idea going around that that eight to one ratio of carbon dioxide is the perfect recipe to kickstart a new planet. It's not some random accident. It's basically a recipe, like it's been designed to change the atmosphere of, of a planet. And those alignments it made with Venus, Mars and Jupiter is too perfect to be chance. That looks like navigation and not just random. It started outgassing way too far from the sun where nothing should be melting. It feels more like a, a, a switch got flipped and then it just activated itself. Its closest approach happens in October, which just so happens to match up with these ancient Mesopotamian cycles that talk about the sky gods returning every 3,600 years. And yeah, it's the same stories about the Anunnaki of Mars being some kind of way station. Now I was checking out another channel, um, Uncovered X. I've put their link in the description if you want to check them out. So they're saying the comet's path is tightening and its, and its speed is changing. The latest math actually makes a direct hit on Mars look possible. It's moving at around 87 kilometers per second, way faster than anything we've tracked before. And its tail doesn't act normal. It pulses every 17 minutes, almost like a deliberate steering. It's, it's showing odd metallic signatures um, and strange reflections, which has people worried this might not just be ice and dust, but some kind of probe being controlled. If it did hit, the impact would be catastrophic. Think of the amount of energy, it'd be like a million times greater than our biggest atomic bombs. The debris would actually even cross paths with Earth. All right, so now let's talk about that NASA uh, conference about finding evidence of life on Mars. I I've picked out a couple of bits, so, so let's have a look. A year ago, we thought we found uh, what we believe to be signs of microbial life uh, on the Mars. Go, did, did we get this right? Do we think this is signs of ancient life on Mars? And after a, a, a year of review, uh, they've come back and they said, listen, we can't find another explanation. Um, so this, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about what we're actually doing here at NASA. Uh, at the first part of next year, we're gonna send four astronauts back to the moon but we're gonna just go around the moon. We're not gonna land in Artemis II, which is coming uh, early next year. But about a year and a half after that, we're gonna do Artemis III. We're going back to the moon. It's gonna help us to actually put American boots on Mars. Uh, the Chinese wanna get back to the moon before us. Uh, that's not gonna happen. And NASA science is undisputably the global authority in the search for life beyond our home planet. Possibility, some would even say a probability, of life beyond Earth, including maybe even complex intelligent life. We are really showing you how we are kind of one step closer to answering humanity's one of their most profound questions. The moment we found it, we put out the images for everybody to see and everybody to share, share in the joy of NASA science. But we have this first result and we're sharing it with you, the world. We develop the technology, we build the hardware. And I wanna underscore the point that NASA science discoveries do not just happen at random. They are the rewarding results from meticulous long-term strategic planning. We have Europa Clipper. After that, we'll launch Dragonfly 
Sky, which has been deemed the most exciting science mission, uh, science space mission of your lifetime. Um, <laughs> and it's a drone. It's super, super exciting. Roman Space Telescope, super excited. Yay, Roman. Um, maintaining Americans' leadership in space, which is so important. Sorry, but I find this whole thing hilarious. It was such a marketing ploy. It was like they were on stage in a theatre or something. They're definitely trying really, really hard to regain public trust and interest, I think. So the whole discovery isn't new at all, but they decided that it was like a perfect time for it to, to come out. Now, was it just a sales pitch or does it have something to do with, with 3 Eye Atlas, you know? So that pretty much sums it up for today. So join us next week. Um, we're doing an episode on um, what would happen if 3 Eye Atlas would actually um, collide with Earth. So we've been working on this for, for a little bit now. So maybe hit that notification button. And if you can, um, hit that like button as well. That would really help us out. So thanks for watching. Cheers.